Yeah. My school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, pick up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make we link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis. Water cup, which team I win the championship this season. Yo, it's a Wanda if our school like a finish the league and beat now. Yeah, the focus is now the Issa Water, the Costa Cup schoolboy football competition. Two teams secure their semi-final spots at the weekend. Clarendon College, the defending champions, and the Ben Francis Cup champions, Glenmuir, also moving into the last four of the La Costa Cup, of course. That ensures they will not play Ben Francis Cup football this season. Not that they will mind, as a new Ben Francis Cup champion will be crowned. And then over in Group 2, Dintil Technical, very very close to qualifying but mathematically they still have some work to do so we'll see how that goes. Lejay Williams is still with us on set for the schoolboy football segment. Lejay let's talk the Da Costa Cup. Let's deal with group one first where um, Clarendon College and Glenmuir secured their semi-final spots. Manchester out yeah. and Christiana. Christiana also out i guess you would say no surprise because when we saw both groups the feeling was clarendon college and glenmuir the two best teams in that group and they would qualify comfortably and that's exactly what has happened yeah it is exactly what has happened because those coming into the dacosta cup those were the two teams that i thought would go all the way to the final i thought they were the two strongest teams a team from group two that we'll get on to i think might be changing my mind a bit but these are two very strong teams, I think, that they're two very well-coached teams also, most importantly. And, uh, um, they, as I said, no surprises, and I'm expecting to see a lot of big things from them, not only in the semifinals, but in the Champions Cup um, on Saturday, when they're, that's going to be draw, the draw is tomorrow, I believe. Yes. So, yeah, that, I'm expecting to see a lot of big things from both of those teams for the rest of the season. Yeah, let's talk about Clarendon College, the defending um, the Costa Cup champions. What have you made of them this season because coming into the season they looked like relatively clear favorites um, they've had a one-all draw with Cornwall College that was in the round of 16 of the Da Costa Cup and even in the round of 16 they had that really close game against St Elizabeth Technical that they managed to come through 1-0 from what you've seen have they been as impressive as you expected them to be in most aspects, yes, because we have to think about it. The game against Stets that you're alluding to, that game was, the field wasn't in the best condition. It was raining a lot. They didn't get to play their usual slick football. That game against Cornwall, by all accounts, they dominated the game. Cornwall took a lead, started to defend, and then they ended up fighting to get that, that goal to equalize, make it one all. So I think what we're seeing from Clarendon College this year is that when things aren't going their way, they know how to grind out certain results and know how to, to add that along to the beautiful football that they usually play. So I think that's really impressive and it's, I think that's even made me even higher on them going forward in the competition. Yeah, um, Liz, you mentioned just now that Glenmuir and Clarendon College are two well-coached teams. Um, Andrew Peart and uh, Lenny Hyde have good clinical football brains, although Lenny Hyde CV based on the multiple titles he has won at different levels, senior and, and, and junior, would, would rank ahead of him. But what, what are their strengths, if you, you know, want to explain to our viewers your statement about the two teams being coached by good, good coaches? Well, firstly, starting, I think that they're two very similar coaches in terms of what they try to achieve on ball, off ball. They're both aggressive off ball and like to be not necessarily passive on ball but they like to be patient in what they try to do so i think in the case of lenny hyde and clarendon college clarendon college they, they have a very fluid system uh, you can tell that lenny hyde is inspired a lot by south american football brazilian football by the way how fluid his team is the positions that his players like to take up how patient they are on the and, ball and, the and you wouldn't add arsenal to that list i, I was i was actually going to compare um, Andrew Peart's Glenmuir to Arsenal because okay, it's actually ahead. very I'm, similar. I know you're an actually. Arsenal fan, so I just thought you would find a way to get them in there, but go ahead. No, yeah. I, I always have to. I always have to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Clarendon College, you can tell, based on when Lenny Hyde grew up, you can tell yeah. the similarities are where you would get his inspirations from. So I think very Brazilian-like, his players have a lot of freedom 
while also being being in a system and you can tell that once they're in the system they and they know it well it works so well for them it helps of course that they have fantastic players from back all the way up to the front and they kept a lot of those players from a title winning team last season we speak about Devante Hodges we speak about Christopher Hall we speak about Malachi Douglas the the player who was named player of the Dacosta Cup player of the All-Star game as well last season so and I have to mention QP as well. I, I was mentioning how important it is for as a tempo setter for a number six to be in front of a back line. And QP does it probably better than anyone else in schoolboy football, in my opinion. So Clarendon College are a fantastic team. Now getting on to Andrew Peart and Glenn Muir, I think that he is has a modern Eurocentric way of thinking about football. We see how rigid his system is. Yes, his players get freedom once they're in certain zones, but the rigidity of it in, in terms of them building in the 3-2-5 formation, one of the, the left back coming in field a lot, and no matter who is in the game, whether it would be someone who is substituted in there as an injury, everyone knows their role once they're in certain um, areas, how they exploit the half spaces, how they look to get their best players on the ball in advantageous um, positions. We speak about Kyle Gordon. He has been fantastic this season. When they were missing Orain Watson due to his dislocated wrist, once he came back in, he knew exactly what to do. They didn't really skip a beat. So I think in terms of if we're going to see that, we're going to see that game tomorrow, yes, but I don't think it's going to be them at full strength. But I think in terms of Glenmuir, it, they are... Because I think the best strength of a coach is being able to transmit your ideas to that team and for them to do it consistently. Yes, people would say, of course, you need to get results with that, and that's true once you're in certain programs. But I think there are very few coaches in Jamaica that are able to transmit their ideas onto their players, as well as Lenny Hyde and Andrew Peart are. So that's what makes me so high on both of their teams. But I mentioned a team in group two that I think can alleviate a lot of what they do structurally just by the pure talent that they have and I'll allow Ricardo to introduce group two first before I get into that team. I tell you what, you might not even have time, but thank you very much for that. Um, let's have a look at the group standings then, shall we? Going into the final set of quarterfinal matches on Tuesday. Um, so as we pointed out to you, Group 1, Clarendon College and Glenmuir, they have already qualified for the semi-finals. Christiana and Manchester out. Clarendon College will play... Um, Glenn Muir and Christiana will play Manchester High, so that will be a top of the table clash on Tuesday. And over in Group 2, yes, this is where all the excitement is going into the final day of a quarterfinal action. And Group 2 at the moment being led by Dintil, they have maximum six points from their two games. And then in second position, Garvey Maceo on three points. They have a plus one goal difference. BB Coke have three points as well, but they have a minus three goal difference. Cornwall College yet to get off the mark, minus three goal difference. Mathematically, all four teams still have a shot at making it into yes. the semi-finals. BB Coke will play Dintel Technical and Garvey Maceo will play Cornwall College. So yeah, you can do the math. All four can get through. The action will be live, by the way, on the Sportsmax app. So download the Sportsmax app today and you can watch the match on Sportsmax Plus, wherever you are across the Caribbean and indeed the world. I suspect that Lejay was big on Dintel, yeah. but he won't get to tell us about it today <laughs> because we're out of time and we have to go to a break. That's the full-time whistle. Mm -hmm. It's a schoolboy football, no local. The youths are moving to international big league. And I still people are but member which party start. It's a schoolboy football. Run come, look one, look all. Which team are the best and I got better than the best and if I hear team beat your chest. It's a schoolboy football. A team could rise and a team could fall. But they never will know until the 